What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations. I'm the host of Epic Conversations, 2020 podcast news and 2018 innovation award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. And also once a month, I host the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that is sponsored by Dove Men Care. And it's also co-sponsored by Dad Central Canada's National Father Organization. As always, I'd like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. And Dr. Vibe is the home of Epic Conversations. And I'm the host of Epic Conversations. Sunday afternoon, January 31st. January is almost done, folks. Wow. It is almost gone. Like it's gone like a flash. And tomorrow will be Black History Month, at least in North America. I know in different countries are celebrated at different times of the year. But I'd like to say happy Black History Month for those who celebrate it. But remember, Black history is every day. So segueing into that, the reason why we're here today, most Sunday afternoon, Sunday afternoons at 5 p.m., I host a conversation called Black Canada Talking. And it's an on, live online event that provides Black Canadians the opportunity to give their takes and POVs of stories that are of importance to them. And you and usually at the last Sunday of each month, we do a little round table with uh L, Warren and Cesar. Just want to tell you today, L is not under under the weather a little bit, and Warren cannot make it today. But I said, no, we're still going to make it happen because we got two epic conversation stories today that need to be chatted about, and I don't want to delay any further. But Cesar is in the house. So Cesar, so, let me get out. Cesar, how are you, brother? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Hello, Black Canada. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me always. Salutations to look in the background in BIA Media. Yes, as always. And how things been with yourself, my brother? One day at a time, as I always say, but always keeping the faith and uh, standing strong for the cause. Pan-Africanism all the way. Uh, a lot of things happening, moving <laughs> its conferences, but always uh, remaining true. Absolutely. Well, we are asking, especially as always, are the community that's watching us live on various platforms to contribute with their comments. We have two topics today that need some conversation. So what we're going to chat about first is the recent goings on with the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce. And if uh, our producer can get up the article for us. We can uh, take a look. For those who do not know about what's been going on, let me give you a quick synopsis. Canada's first Chamber of Commerce dedicated to serve Black-owned businesses has overhauled its leadership team following a tumultuous, excuse me, several weeks that saw the departure of its president and allegations of poor management from disgruntled former volunteers. And this, it's been very disappointing what has happened here in regards to this organization. Now, I don't know the inner goings on with this. I, I was actually at the event where they launched in Toronto a number of, so two or three years ago. They also had the gentleman who was the chairman of the US Black Chamber of Commerce up at this event. And there was, you know, a lot of optimism, positivity, etc. And as we go on during this conversation, we'll get maybe a little bit deeper into this, but, let me tell you, this has caused a lot of comments. Oh, let's just put it that way in regards to this. So, Cesar, uh, because you're alone, I got your back today. So you and I are going to go back and forth on this one. When you first heard this conversation piece, what were your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts, to be very honest with you, are simply the fact that, um, first and foremost, we have to say this, it's, of course, it's not, it's far less about the individuals per se. I do not know personally the individual's concern. However, my concern as a black person and as a Pan-Africanist is to notice that these type of situations happen too often in our community, in our black communities worldwide, to be honest, and too often reflect the mismanagement and mishandling that we see in our black countries too often. Uh, to me, it's tragic. It's very unfortunate, especially when we're speaking of a time in terms of, uh, uh, you know, an awakening or reawakening of Black consciousness that is asking for concrete actions that notably involves investments, concrete investments. 
It becomes even worse when we take account of the fact of such as government funding, loans and grants, uh, up to the amount of uh, 220 or $221 million that the Canadian government intends to instill in terms of developing black communities through uh, notably commerces and finances. So when we have such a situation for a body that is the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, AKA from coast to coast to coast in Canada, it's not a good look for our community. Let's not get twisted, let's be honest. Such also happens in other communities. It absolutely does, notably in the dominant white community. Let's just think of situations in terms of mismanagement of funds, or even when you look at the situation that happened with Desjardins regarding security breaches. But we are not, we are neither whites nor we are other people, so called people of color. We are black people. And too often, the negative portrayals that come about our communities must not be okay with, again, another case of financial mismanagement, but also behavioral conduct. I mean, we're probably going to talk about it, but there have been other cases, and I've been involved in such cases uh, of, you know, organizations that come with such promises and too often uh, leave sisters, brothers, and families disappointed. Mm -hmm. You know, a number of things, and before we go any further, I want to shout out to Ryan O'Neill Knight. Thanks for the comments, and Kevin Messon down in the NYC. Thank you so much. Anyone else who's watching this live, please feel free to share some comments with us. Um, a number of th reasons why I was disappointed with this. First of all, as you had said, um, this does not have a good look for all of us, mm -hmm. right? Like this is this was the big showcase or and the, the collateral damage. Mm -hmm. Right. This is a, like I, a lot of 2020. I spent listening to concerns by profit and not for profit organizations about this, that, the other thing. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be honest, I had I was hearing concerns about this organization from a number of people. And I was saying, please, 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 let's not, because this is the showcase organization for black business in Canada. And I thought, and one of the things that they received half a million dollars from Facebook, they received significant money from uh, companies like uh, Sobeys. And I thought, okay, if I'm, and who knows what's going to happen, but if I'm Facebook, if I'm Sobeys, am I going to put another dollar into this organization after that agreement ends? And then the sad thing too is if they don't put any more dollars in, the black person who's looking for help business-wise and consumer-wise to maybe move up business-wise, that opportunity may be shut down. We don't know for sure. No, we know. We know. Vibe. We know. Uh, the truth of the matter is that as you are still uh, a marginalized minority in this country, and by default, one of the things that occurs is that we tend to be uh, typecast, you know, stereotyped. So by default, the body, which is to represent us in power dynamics, such as commerce, finances, a high amount of dollars. You know, at the end of the day, one of the things people must understand is that business is centered on trust, whether it's legal or illegal. You have a trusted relationship that is to occur in terms of the transaction of services, but as well, the advertising of goods and in the background, the proper management of resources. If there's a failure in that chain, and usually the failure either comes from the very system itself, such as notably concerns regarding the constitution, you know, even the processes in terms of from meetings to how things are handled, but as well, as well and very much because business and commerce rely on human beings the personal characters and characteristics of the individual. When you have a failure at any of these levels, because we are black people in a world of white supremacy, we get basically stereotyped in terms of the next business person having a great idea, wanting to bring up something. And this is part of the reason why too often in the black community, we say 
by black. We say black empowerment. We say support your sisters and brothers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's great distrust because people tend to uh, have too much spotlight on the negative that has failed. And for those who are not black, wow, it's a little bit hard by default to blame them when saying if your national body to represent your commerce and finances had such issues. I mean, you may have an investigation going on to prove anything, but even the suspicion, when you are in a marginalized group, suspicion kills, mm. such as the facts to prove or to disprove. We don't have the luxury of such stories coming to the forefront. And we have right here in Canada, as you were saying, Dr. Vibe, right here in Canada, we have far too many challenges to allow ourselves to keep having such failures that are mediatized. Yeah, it's 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 just a really concerning situation. I don't know. Uh, I, I I like I said when I heard what was going down, I just said, "Wow!" Like, if you're an outsider looking in, what do you think? Like, if you like what you know, and and the question is, do you do you? I wouldn't say do you blame them there, but it just reinforces stereotypes. Let me put it that way. That's just like a piggyback when you're saying it reinforces a thought that whether it's in the front of mind or back of mind, if it's front of mind, it's going to get more impactful. If it's back to mind, it's going to come to front of mind. We can be, look, we can be very quiet, very blunt and straightforward here. So in the spirit of fairness, let us be real. I often talk, one of the, you know, in terms of my analysis of black communities, I speak very truthfully and directly of the three cancers of the black psyche in terms of number one, entertainment, consumerism, and religion. If you look at the first two, why is it that too often black people, notably black men, dark-skinned black men, but of course women, why is it that we tend to be seen first and foremost as entertainers? because you are successful at it. Black people are successful in music, sports, anything. Any sports that black people uh, decide to get serious about, whether it's basketball or football, soccer, whichever, you even look at hockey, you look at golf, we shine. By default, we become seen and associated to a lens of entertainment. We are not seen through a lens of intellectualism, even if we have black specialists, even if we have blacks with degrees and years of experience in the craft that they do. No, we are seen through a lens of entertainment in terms of blacks and success. When it comes to consumerism, we are seen as consumers. We are not seen as basically leaders in terms of accountability, in terms of innovation, in terms of being trusted with large amounts of money and being able to do something successful. Of course, it's not true because we do have success in terms of business and commerce in the black community. But because we are a marginalized minority and because the Western world, especially the Americas, are very much founded on the notion of race, by default, each and every of our failure is given a shine that far surpasses any of our successes. This is where uh, the situation as for the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce becomes that much more damaging. The damage is far beyond the Chamber of Commerce itself. It's far beyond that. You could have the similar issue happening in General Chamber of Commerce, aka mainstream, aka white. It will not get the publicity that a Black Chamber of Commerce will have because it will not have such stereotypes. It's important that we speak on this and we reflect on that as black people because we're speaking of the Chamber of Commerce here, but I can give other examples, notably you know, in the legal sector where the promise and the hope of success and you know, organization by black people has not met the criteria. And unfortunately, the deception, I don't care so much in terms of white stereotyping us, white and other people of color. So, if you want to use that term, I don't care so much about them stereotyping us, but I care very much about our own people becoming distrustful because the next brother, the next sister 
who has a great idea, who has a great innovation, will find it that much harder to convince their own people to support them because of the failure of too many will get to be mediatized. So there, there, there are some people that have talked to me about this and they've said, you know what? Uh, and it was interesting because when I heard this go down, I was going, is this going to get to the mainstream media? And do you think, is it, was it good that this got out to the mainstream media or is it, or should we take a, a thought process that we should keep our own things in our own house and not let it out? <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I was looking for your response on this one. Here we go. It's it's an it's an excellent question, and I'm gonna be quite honest. Very unfortunately, to use the language of Franz Fanon, the vast majority of black people, as I say, they don't live with white people, they don't live with Arabs, nor with Jews, nor with Asians. They survive in terms of systemic racism. They wear a mask. You know, black, uh, Franz Fanon. Black, uh, black skin, white mask. So black people, by wearing masks, too many become unable to keep shameful situations or situations of conflict that should be resolved within the family, that could be resolved with a phone call or conversation among us. Too many become unable to do it because by default of always seeking to have a little bit of advantage in terms of the dominant white or Arab group, there will always be leakages that will occur. There will always be those who will see to it that whether it's in a sense of betrayal or in a sense of we need to bring accountability here, they will go bring the information that could be private, that could be solved within our own, they will bring it to the white mainstream organizations, if not media. You will notice how often do we hear about issues such as a financial management in the Asian community, in the Jewish community. Of course, it exists. Of course, it happens. There are humans just like us, but how we don't hear of them. I'm not saying they don't get leakages in the media as well, but I'm saying it's far less common. When we look at the black community, today we're talking about the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce we're in 2021. Four years ago, in 2017, we were talking about the African Legal Clinic having fund withdrawn by legal aid. I myself have been involved regarding a former organization that I was president of regarding this type of issues, Caribbean Union of Canada. I have been in an economic council where such situations were also the case. And I'm not the only black person who can say this. I'm pretty sure the vast majority of black people who are involved at a community level, at an organizational level, at a level where either funding or people donating can speak to either directly involved in a case of mismanagement of funds, mismanagement of leadership and unethical behaviors, or they've heard of it. So it becomes a problem in terms of ourselves as a community, our community, is not solid. Our community is not strong nor united. It becomes a problem. And it becomes even more a problem when our notion of success is seen through entertainment or as last year, 2020, us protesting. Those are not the signs of successes. When we look at the uh, minority communities that are successful, and I'm gonna give names such as uh, Chinese, Jewish, Indian. We are not used to seeing such stories in the media about them. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but because we are black, we tend to have too much shine on our negativity in mainstream media. That is a fundamental problem. Well, it, it's interesting because I'd be curious to know how did this reporter find out this story? Were they told directly? Were they indirect that's all that's a whole nother conversation piece and i'm seeing here ryan is saying this type of infighting should have been taken care of in-house i think uh easier said than done because if people are wronged especially these days they're gonna they're gonna tell other people about it and it sounds like there may be some again we don't know the full story we're only hearing the media scope but these days it's very hard to keep well 
especially in the black community, infighting seems to get out. And a lot of well, times, it, a lot of times, it's us that's telling other people about it. Well, absolutely, absolutely. And look, uh, maybe if I can have look, if you can maybe share. Uh, the article of my resignation from the Equity uh, Council of the Ottawa Police, that was a perfect example. The conflict that happened was me addressing the Black leadership, the Black community leadership of the Equity Council of the Ottawa Police, and I have been given concrete uh, confirmation from a white senior leader in the Ottawa Police that the story of my resignation, my resignation later, 10 pages later, I am a little bit wordy. It was leaked from a white person to the media, but for that person to be aware of it, something that could have been kept inside, you know, things escalated. So too often that's what happens. And this is because of a position of um, uh, kind of an inferiority complex where too often we end up having a few people, a few people who instead of basically working to build a stronger insight, will dismiss uh, you know, the notion of solidarity, the notion of you know, let's come together as a family, let's resolve this. But too often, because too often, too many of our people are wearing masks and then of course the entire community get painted uh, negatively and be seen as such as, again, you know, the stereotype, you can't trust black people with money. You can't trust black people to run a successful community organization or an organization at a community level. Oh, I got a story. It's interesting. I got a story, and um, so and I'm I can I'm not going to name names on this one, but there is a very well known black Canadian activist, well known. So, um, actually, my dad and him went to school together back in Jamaica, back in old, old for many years. They're in their 80s now. They've known each other this long. And about a year and a half ago, I went to visit this gentleman. And I got to be careful here because uh, let me just put it this way. Uh, he, I, I'm going to have to skip some of this because it'll get, it'll get too crazy. All he basically said, and he's a philanthropist, he said, he basically said, Dr. Vibe, black people, black organizations, and money, and he just shook his head. I, I won't I won't I won't get into the details of the story he told me, uh, but it's a classic. And when I when I heard that, I went, oh my goodness. So I I don't we have to really we have to take a deep dive into the, and I think what we're, we may have to do on Black Canada talking, we may have to have a series of conversations deeper and have talk about this subject. We need to really have a, a deep. Before you go there, Caesar, I'm also just to say, Ryan is if Ryan's comment can go up on the screen because I'd like you to to comment on that. So Ryan is saying we as a Black community need our own constitution, something that is a guiding light on how for how we interact with each other. What are your comments on that? I'd like to say, very unfortunately, Brother Ryan, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to sound, <laughs> I'm going to disappoint you. How do you want people, Black people, to have a constitution or some type of guidelines in terms of how to agree with one another when, one example, as Black people very often walking on the street or even driving, we will nod to one another, head nod. We recognize one another. We know what we're going through. Sometimes our silence speaks to one another eye to eye. But at the same time, this is the same black community where too often people are there standing up for what? For Jesus or for Allah. They're standing there because they're either from Congo, from Rwanda, from Haiti, from Jamaica, from uh, basically the African-Americans, African Canadians, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, they divide themselves also in terms of conservative and liberal. Look at the situation in Montreal. You have black people who basically all together, back in 1969, we had brother Roosevelt Douglas, before he became uh, president or prime minister of Trinidad, he was there in 1969 in the black student protest at Sir George Williams University that became Concordia, protesting against racism. How do you think you would feel coming to Montreal today when you see such a rift between 
black anglophones and black francophones in Montreal. We have way too many elements of division. And I didn't even talk about social classes. And yet, we have the same enemy here, white supremacy. That's why I always say it. We need to make Wakanda not be a fiction, make it real. But for that to happen, we need to have improved black consciousness. We need to have our black people from dark skin as midnight to light skin as mixed with green eyes and blonde hair to understand and to value that they are black first and foremost, and as such, to be able to support one another because by being able to do that, they will be able to hold each other more accountable and to be able to support one another. My colleague, Ketia Peter and I, but even look of BIA Media, we have come to understand this. And as such, we support and we run our operations together in terms of making sure that we are not messing up. We are not doing either back dealings. We are not doing things that if my name come out there, it becomes a big shame to the community because I have mismanaged the trust as a speaker, as a person dealing with finances, as a representative, I have not led astray the, mis the trust that the community put in me. We need to grow black consciousness. Our youth are looking at us. Our young people are looking at us. The mm. seniors, the elders are looking at us. We need to make Wakanda be real. And Wakanda is not some country or kingdom in Africa. Wakanda must live within each and every one of us beyond just a head nod or beyond just another stereotype. So until we get there, we won't be able to have a constitution. I can be as Pan-Africanist as I want. I can wear my traditional hat as much as I want. But if my next brother, my next sister is more interested in pleasing the white man, the Arabic woman, in the name of Allah, or basically trying to get a promotion by code switching or wearing a mask, it will not work. Yeah. It will not work. Yeah. I just want to add here. So Miss Peters is saying and the saying a comment here, and white and white corporations know who the agents are. They do. They do. Of course. Of course. Uh let's have here. Is she also saying as long as we know that we have good intentions? We trust each other even when we don't see eye to eye. That's our guidelines. You know, Miss Peters, I appreciate that. I just wish, I just feel that not, not the majority aren't like that. When you really get down to the core, when push comes to shove, I'm not, I'm not certain about that anymore. But I just have to say something. Yeah. What Ketsia, yeah. Mrs. Peters, my colleague, CEO of Roots and Culture in Canada, where I'm president. What Kessia is saying is true, but what you're saying is also truthful. The vast majority of black people, when it comes to issues of power dynamics, when it comes to very serious business, such as handling funds and large amount of funds, when it comes to strategically organizing and coming together, the vast majority of black people fail at it because of the systemic oppressions that are upon us, white supremacy in the Western world, Arab supremacy in Northern Africa and the Middle East, et cetera, et cetera. And by default, what happened is that black people, they're not living, they're surviving. And part of surviving yeah. is betrayal, wearing a mask, pretend, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, that becomes justified due to the ongoing oppression that we go through. I will say many, I won't say the majority, but I will say, um, again, Kevin, I don't know enough about the group. I I'm pretty sure they are a nonprofit but governments. Got, well, if you look at the article, Kevin, one of the accusations made by the past president saying they did not, they never, they did not hold regular uh, AGMs. There wasn't the government was governance wasn't in place, and this is concerning to me from what I'm hearing because last year, 2020. I heard this all from so many different types of business. And I said, look, do you have regular AGMs? Are your meetings documented? This, this, and this. And they didn't have them in place. And it's unfortunate. If, if the accusations are true, this is the bellwether organization for black business in Canada having the same sort of challenges than many of our businesses have that are not 
front front line. So it's it's just really it's concerning. I think that uh I don't. I like. I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm just really concerned. I'm. This. This. This one was a hard one to take for me. Well, the problem, a, Dr. Vibe. If I can add to what you're saying, part of the problem. And again, I am not in the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce. I am not here trying to uh, stain their name further or to add to the division or take any side. That's not the point at all. But a big part of the problem is that even for a non-black person. We found the good intent and, you know, uh, being as objective as possible. The problem becomes when you have the former president or senior leader in the Black Chamber of Commerce criticizing the leadership yes. from ABCD. It's not a good, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. Not, it's not a good look. not a good look. It's, 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 I mean, terrible. if your organization doesn't have regular meetings or constitution, whatever, but People are seeing that you're getting the job done. That's a completely different conversation. But if from within you get internal criticism, how are you going to blame those who are not even black to even look at your organization in terms of, for example, culturally appropriate programs, in terms of accountability, in terms of being able to trust and even associate their names to your name, a.k.a. branding? You can yeah 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 it's it's then that was another thing I'm looking at because we know how those organizations somewhat think and they don't they don't want they can't afford they're already a number of them are already dealing with enough challenges of not having enough blacks in their organizations Absolutely. and so here they make a jump into the pool and now they say we shouldn't no, we jump what kind of pool did we jump into mm-hmm and for black people listening, my black people, I'm going to tell you, honestly, in an age or in a decade, as I really hope so, of renewed black consciousness, awareness, activism, militantism, you know, people wanting to, you know, defund the police, invest in black this, black that, those white partners, those non-black partners, they are looking for reliable black people in organizations to associate well, themselves with well, just to, just interrupt you just a second regardless of color they want reliable investment they want reliable they, investment they, period they want they want their roi their return on investment absolutely you know? so the question will be it's almost like we're investing in a stock mm -hmm. right I mean, that's you, what it is right and are you willing to hang out for the long term if it gets bad vibes i'm pulling my money out but that's, absolutely that's what it is i mean if you can't trust if you can trust someone with a hundred dollars, you're not going to trust them with a thousand. If you if you want to trust someone, whether it's with a funding of a thousand or a hundred thousand dollar, it's a little bit hard. If when you Google them, you get an article like that, and then by default, those will become associated with them. They get blamed. I, I, I've been through that situation uh, three years ago when we were dealing. Um, we ended a, a association, Mrs. Peters and I, with Caribbean Union of Canada. We basically had to do a cleanup job in terms of basically showing that, no, there was an internal situation. It is not to be extrapolated to the black community as a well, whole, but because of the, our association with the former organization, we have to make sure that those who deal and want to partner with us, whether they be white, but even black, can be sure that, okay, we can trust you to deliver. We can trust you to do business with you. It's very important. Yeah, very the it's, the it's optics, not investing. You the invest optics, on trust. The optics are not good. The, the optics are not good. Not not at all. Not uh, at all. And 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 I'm glad we're having this conversation because I don't think many Black Canadians are aware of this situation. Right? There <laughs> people people on our level because we're we're somewhat plugged in, right? But I'm saying that the vast majority of Black Canadians probably aren't too aware of the situation and are not aware of the big implication right down the line to their level that it has. That's so a that's connection. Why, yeah. That's why I wanted to chat about it today, how this is going to, it affects from the top right down to the bottom because perception, 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 perception. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's important to understand this. 
the very nature of white supremacy and systemic racism upon black people makes it that we are all proud when Obama gets elected, whether you like his politics or not, but you know, a black person at the top. We are black, we are, we are proud when, uh, um, what's her name, the Williams sister. Uh, Serena and Venus. When she has success, we are proud. It, it almost feels like a, a family member has succeeded in their endeavor. We are proud of Denzel Washington. We are proud of so many examples. We all feel especially sad when Kobe Bryant dies. It's like something in us that dies. When Chadwick Bosman died, it almost felt like a family member will die. So we can understand this type of connection. We must also understand that when something happens, and notably when it's mediatized, the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, African Legal Clinic, and we have to be careful. I'm absolutely, absolutely not saying that because it's in the media, white media if you want, therefore it's true. But because it gets into the media, because it gets leaked, because it's not solved with people diminishing their ego, with people coming to see eye to eye, as uh, Ketia Peter said, CEO Ketia Peter said, we can disagree, but we respect each other, we recognize our blackness, and we understand the importance of our community as a whole, because these don't happen, aren't solved, when it gets out there into the mainstream media, even the next black person will be like, oh, can I trust you? Should I support your business? Am I really sure that your customer service will be on par with the quality of your product? And where's my money really going? It becomes a liability. It becomes a liability to any black person. Like I said, whether you're dark skin like midnight or you mix with green eyes and blonde hair, you get seen with that lens that you're black and you cannot be trusted with serious, strategic, and money-involved relations. I'm, and we could go on for a bit. I'm just gonna. So Kevin is saying, Cesar, you hit it on the head earlier. Where are the black people who are accountable professionals that have substantial experience and understand how to run an organization? You know something? There are a lot of them out there. There are. But you know what they're doing? Un a number of them are weak working in white organizations <laughs> because there's stability. <laughs> so more stability. Well, I would say stability, but they're in a lot of them are in white organizations. And again, this this is I I think we're just gonna we're gonna spend the whole hour on this because we're gonna it seems that the comments are going fast and furious here. So I think a lot of them are in white organizations. A lot of them don't want to touch the black organizations because they see and they've had either personal experiences or they see things like this happening. What is happening with the claim the Black Canadian Chamber of Commerce is not new. It's not new. It's there, not are, new. there are many Black Canadian organizations, and now, and I'll, I want to put it out there: if there's anyone watching from the Chamber, and if I'm misquoting or anything, please tell me. And you have more than if you want to come on this platform and share. Michael Forrest, the past head. If you want to come on, anyone from there who sees this, if you want to come on and share the story, the mic and the platform is open. We would love it to have that because right now I, I'm seeing really not enough lens. Whoever's ready to come on, please come on. So I just want to go back to your Kevin message. It goes, it goes back to trust. Uh, yeah, it does. It goes back to trust. Trust and consciousness. Trust and consciousness. Yes. May I, uh, can we put up to Miss Peter's comment? I think we need to have that up there. So when Cesar and, and, and I reported to the minister that we could not accept the funding, his team told us that this usually never happens. It's only after the money is spent and gone that the government finds out that the black organization wastes money. Oh, you, oh, oh boy. If I can put a figure, if I can put a figure to what CEO Ketia Peters was talking about. We were talking about a funding of uh, a renewable yearly funding of $150,000 uh, that the Ministry of uh, Children and Social Services of former uh, Minister Michael Cotto yes. given to our then organization, Caribbean Union of Canada. That, that, you know what? I, 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 among black youth. We so, need to have a conversation about 
Where's the money? <laughs> I think that we should title it because this, again, this is not uncommon with for profit. So the whole funding structure in Canada, it's that's a whole other conversation. And it's very, it's very damaging because when these type of things come out, you know, what kind of message are we telling our youth? What kind of message are we telling the next uh, black entrepreneur? What kind of message are we telling our sisters who want to do something that involves hair and braiding? What kind of message are we telling the black professional who basically will feel that it's safer and more stable to be in a white organization? We are basically sabotaging our own community, our own efforts because of greed, because of ego, because of, we can even talk about some male toxicity. We can talk also of female toxicity. All of these elements must be taken into account in terms of people not putting first and foremost, the community First, success of the organization. They, they're not. They. It's unfortunate, but we have to really look at who does this impact. We have to think about the community and then go backwards. How does it affect the community and go backwards? This. And, and and this is not just with the chamber. I think we all have to do a checkup from the neck up. Many of us, mm -hmm. we have to do a checkup from the neck up in regards to how is what we're doing impacting the person that really needs it. And I, that's why I like, uh, and I'm just seeing the comments right now, uh, the comment from Birdie Lean TV. We are all interconnected, especially when you're minorities, when you're marginalized, when you're black, under this type of systems of oppression, under this type of culture, media that tends to forecast us in a negative light. We are all interconnected, all interconnected. It doesn't matter. Dr. Vibe's success is my success. My failure becomes Dr. Vibe's failure yeah, yeah, because yeah. the only thing that's for sure and certain when we succeed, we succeed all together. The, the impression that one black person's success is purely individual is a lie because your failure, your failure will fall back on the community. Ms. Peters is saying most people in the black community don't even think about the bigger impact. And that's that's concerning because as I always say, we come from a communal heritage. Absolutely. North American society is based on the individual. So why are we trying to be something that is not us? <laughs> just bought, bought it, it, it's just like round peg, square hole. It yeah. just doesn't make sense. Well, we're going to spend the last few minutes on another story that like a body blow to black and many black Canadians. So the next, we'll spend the last few minutes on this. And again, hopefully some people have heard about this. If not, you need to know, especially in black Canada, several black organizations were denied federal funding through a program designed to help such groups build capacity after the employment and social development Canada told them that their leadership was not sufficiently black. This one, wow. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and we're, we're looking on, if you're watching this live on the replay, um, if you want to scroll down a, a little bit, producer, scroll down for me a bit. This is going back a few weeks, but there were, org so for, can you hold right there? So organizations like Operation Black Vote Canada, I'll reading from the story, Velma Morgan, the chair of Operation Black Vote Canada, said her group received an email from the department saying their application did not show, quote, the organization is led and governed by people who self-identify as black. The department sent a second email the next day saying their applications were not approved because it did not receive, quote, the information required to move forward, she said. And then she then quotes, as if we're incompetent or foolish and going to believe that the second email over the first email, Morgan said in an interview with the Canadian press. She said... Operation Black Vote, a not-for-profit, multipartisan organization that aims to get more black people elected at all levels of government, is one of at least five organizations that were not approved for funding. So uh, interesting enough, Kevin Messon is saying he's watching live. Velma is his cousin. But this was another body blow to black Canada. Absolutely. I find it tragic. Uh... <laughs> no, uh, no, no, again, I didn't see the forms, but I would be very interested to know. And it, and. I haven't heard enough to say that what's going to be done to hopefully turn this around. But Cesar, when you heard about this one, what are your thoughts? Uh, so I am in, uh, 
in a WhatsApp group of uh, Ottawa Black leaders, and some of the leaders are not from Ottawa, but overwhelmingly from Ottawa, and this conversation happened. I'm just going to put it, uh, I'm going to borrow the words of um, former MP, uh, uh, Selena Cesar Chavanes, talking about how uh, the disappointment, but to me it's not, it's not a disappointment, it's not a surprise, but the perception that it seems we must always be proving our blackness. And when saying that, it's not a matter of agreeing or not, but it's a matter of being reminded very, uh, you know, very much in connection with our first topic in terms of the, uh, the trust and accountability in terms of large funding uh, with black people. Are we to be trusted with money? Because when you ask that question, it also goes to, are we respected? Are we respected? Are we seen as serious? Are we seen as basically, we need to prove ourselves time and again, that not only we are black, but at the same time, we can be trusted with public funds to properly manage it. To me, uh, that situation is very unfortunate. Unfortunate because uh, it puts well-meaning black people uh, in a very uh, conflicting situation when you look at, for example, uh, Minister Hussein, um, in terms of uh, social development, it's a little bit hard to be the black minister at the top of uh, basically a ministry that has refused funding to some black organizations under the claim that they were not black enough. I mean, Minister Hussein is himself Somali and of Somali origin, Somali Canadian. Yep. And here in Ottawa, we had um, uh, Somali Family Services, uh, the center that got refused services. You're kidding. Like, I'm not kidding. Wow. We had this conversation. Uh, I, I look and probably find the article. I can look it up. I can look it up for you. It's how do you like how do you explain that in terms of it's as if me, I were told that I'm not black enough. I mean, are you telling me that I'm not pan-Africanist enough because I support our sisters and brothers who are LGBTQ? That's a different topic. But you tell me that I'm not black enough, and therefore you will not give me funding. However, 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 let us dare to look at a different alternative of what such a situation means. Less dependency on government funding and strengthening our communities so that we are stronger and we impose our respect. This story ties directly into the first story regarding the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce and too often an expectation of funding loans and grants from the same government that on a very similar and linked story will have some black run, black created organizations that they're not black enough. Can we imagine the same government or ministry telling some organizations that funding let's say to address anti-Semitism is not going to go to this organization created and run by Jewish people and to claim to them that they're not Jewish enough. If we can't imagine that, how can we accept it when we're black? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'm seeing here Ms. Peters saying an urgent strategic meeting will take place with the government regarding those rejection letters. Well, you know, I have a concern about that. You have a window of opportunity to turn this around. And, and, and when government wants something to happen quickly, they can make it happen quickly, right? My concern is every day more people get more and more marginalized. You know, the, the, and I'm just saying it here, and, I, and, and I'm just saying this just from where I sit. Go back to $25 million that are supposed to be given to Black Canadians. Promised a long time ago. Remember that, Cesar? Mm -hmm. It hasn't come out yet. So if you're a person who's running an organization, if the $25 million hasn't happened, what confidence do you have in this happening in a quick period of time? Because, again, we're dealing with people's lives here. 
Absolutely. They're on the margins. They're on the bumpers. Like when you're on a bowling alley, you have those gutters. Those those people are trying to stay out of the gutter. So to speak. And, and if I can add to what you're saying, when we say we're dealing with marginalization in terms of people who need these fundings and grants to come to keep the electricity on, to keep the office open, because it's actually helping X amount of families in the community. A lot of these organizations are making the difference between a meal, life and death, food bank. Let's, say, let's, say, let's really get down to it. Life and death. Absolutely. So it's not really a small matter. And for all that, I'm not going to say sympathy, but I can try to understand Minister Hussein. And we need to wonder, who is it in the Canadian government who can dare to tell an organization that they're not black enough. Uh, look, if you can please maybe share the article that I just sent you regarding the Somali Center. Just read that title. This is not uh, John, Peter, or Mary, or, or, or Karen, or Becky in the Canadian government. It clearly says from the feds, the Somali Center in Ottawa being denied funding and the claim that it's not black enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know if some people think Somalia is on planet Mars <laughs> or, or, or it's kind of a, a village in a country in Europe. No, it's black, it's African, it's black and proud. These are the people oh, of the former God. Okay, so, okay, so Ms. Peter is saying, I'm here that it might be a computer bug. Really? <laughs> Cause hold on a second. So if it, so I'm just, I, and I just, and I'm talking about in regards to fairness here. If it was a computer bug, you get the reports on who isn't and who is getting these things. So again, we don't know the level level of competency of the people in there, but wouldn't someone of higher level know at least the organizations that got denied and really go, uh oh. Not, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And again, if it, if it could have been an error that was sent out in letters, well, if it was an error, I understand that. But I've not heard anything saying, we apologize, we're going to get this right. I haven't heard that yet. I haven't heard that yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, and you know, I'm not being to a CEO Ketia Peters, but yes, it could have been an error. Yes, it could have been a computer bug. But you know... Why is it that these type of errors don't happen to uh, organization of the Jewish community that are not Jewish enough? How come these type of errors that really speak to the dignity and respect of a community don't seem to happen to those of the Chinese community uh, and dismissing whatever issues that they're, go that they're going through, such as last year regarding uh, uh, anti-Asian racism because of coronavirus? Okay. Somehow, well, once again, so, the so black Kevin community. Saying, Kevin's saying it's a matter of turning on a, of a lights on a light switch. Miss Peters is saying that's what a strategic meeting is for. I, I and I respect that, but you you shouldn't need a meeting. <laughs> to, to, just is my opinion. Maybe I I know government moves in a lot of interesting ways, but. Luke, put up that story again, and I want to know when that score story was published if you could just quick because i just want to get okay so that story is going back to january 20th it is january 31st no meeting yet i'm not saying i'm just saying you can take the story off the screen no no meeting yet i'm not saying i'm not saying i'm just saying no meeting yet no meeting yet so I hear you, Ms. Peters, respect that. But, and it may get back to another thing, as Cesar was saying, that he was saying that Ms. Siobhan was saying, are we important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. <laughs> Peters put it so well, you know. The government does have a history of playing us. And, you know, when saying that, yes, Justin Trudeau, Putting a knee down, you know, 
Black Lives Matter, yay, you know, performative social activism. Let's not forget blackface, 2019. But at the same time, in the spirit of fairness, yes, millions in loans and grants, aka you got to reimburse with interest. But then you have something like this. This is a matter of dignity. It's beyond a matter of business. It's beyond a matter of funding. To me, I actually even see this as being of a, a graver, even more serious nature than the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce because it attacks directly our dignity and our very respect. As former MP Cesar Chavez said, we still have to prove yeah. our Blackness to non-Black people. Because even if it's a computer error, and this is why I'm agreeing with you 100%, even if it's a computer error, we are talking about over a week, going to two weeks, where is the big story in the media? Where is the press conference? Where is in between uh, the, the, the COVID update and the Joe Biden uh, administration, uh, you know, trade dealings and all that? Where is even that 30 seconds or one minute of acknowledgement, apology, and especially concrete actions in terms of the Canadian government did wrong? This is what we're going to do to fix it. It's not about another, you know, tears, uh, you know, crocodile white tears. It's not about just an apology. It's not about even a strategic meeting. It's about an apology and concrete actions and a recognition. Congratulations to Justin Trudeau for recognizing the existence of systemic racism. But when things like this happen, it's the slap in the face towards each and every person who's black in terms of the dignity and the respect in this nation. This nation that loves to claim their of human rights, best nation to live in, and yet we have so many indigenous communities that don't even have access to clean drinking water. There you go. Yep. So we're going to shut it down. I hope we did Elle and Warren proud today. <laughs> and my salutations to my sister Elle and my brother Warren, who unfortunately could not be with us here. today. But, uh, and we hope that the audience, we, we, held, we, we held up the fort well while they weren't here with us today. I'd like to thank um, everybody. But we have a special surprise. So, producer, can you give the special surprise? Can you get it ready and put it on when you have it ready to go? What can I say? I've, one of the biggest blessings in my life is to have you as a friend. Cezanne, you're the most committed, loyal, and loving friend anyone could ever have. You're a very direct person. You always tell the truth. You tell it as it is. And everyone should have someone like this in their lives. I feel so blessed that you have chosen to be a friend to me. I feel blessed that we are colleagues, that we get to work together to contribute in our community. I learned so much from you. And um, I, I continue to look up to you as a strong Black man. I continue to look up to you as a Black man who shows a role, a positive role model in our community. I want to wish you a wonderful birthday today. I want to wish you health because you have so much more to do and so much more to give. And it's only the beginning. Today is a day where a shining star was born 40 something years ago. And um, every day I watch you grow Every day I watch you become a better person, a better man. And every day I count my blessing for having you as a friend. Happy birthday, my friend. Thank you for all you do. Take care. <laughs> God, yeah. Thank you very much, Katia. I did not know. I did not expect this. I'm very honored. Um, Thank you, Black Canada Talking, Dr. Vibe, <laughs> Media. Thank you to our sisters and our brothers, uh, the support and everything. I turned 42 years old 
on January 27. Uh, Aquarius and proud, always black and proud and Pan-Africanist first. But yes, thank you so much. I'm very humbled. I'm very honored. And if I can say, uh, CEO Ketia Peters made me the honor uh, for the first time of being a godfather. Uh, so I'm very, very much honored. Thank you so much. And you can count on me to always stay true and to always be uh, a humble servant to the cause of our people. Global Pan-Africanism is to advance the cause of black people on the four corners of the world, on the four corners of the universe. That is who I am. I live for the cause. Thank you. I am very honored. Thank you, Dr. Vibe. Thank you, Luke, especially. Thank you, CEO Ketia Peters. Thank you. That is absolutely beautiful. Ms. Peters, well done, well said. And I think we may have to get you on Black Canada talking, Ms. Peters, if you're up for it, because you rock the house. You rock the house. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who made this an epic conversation today. Birdie Lynn from the U.S., Ms. Peters. We had also uh, Ryan, Kevin. I know there are other people that were watching live or on the replay. Also, people that are listening on the replay. And also, to I'd like to say, uh, Black Canadian Chamber of Commerce, we have... We're, we're believing that you'll be able to turn it around, not only for your organization, but most importantly, Black Canadians. Also, Employment and Social Development Canada, mistakes are made, but let's turn it around. Let's get it right. You're more than happy. Both those organizations, if you want to bring a representative onto the Dr. Vibe show, Black Canada Talking, the mic is open. If we got some things wrong, it's our head, not our heart, but please correct us. Please correct us. You have a home here because it's Black Canada talking. That's all Black Canadians, not just the ones that show up here. It's for all Black Canadians. So as always, I like to close off with this. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions and aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Also remember love, faith, and respect. And remember rem to give yourself grace because we still got a lot of work to do, folks. 2020, that yeah, was a challenging year for many of us, but that doesn't mean that the challenges have got any lower. They just keep on keeping on. Also want to say thanks to BIA Media. God bless. Peace be well. Keep the faith. And while good, next week, we have a nutritionist on about stress and health management and eating. Miss Trudy Stones, who is featured in a lot of Canadian media, will be with us next week. So please check it out. We're going to have an epic conversation. God bless. Peace be well. Keep the faith and walk good.